check, check, check. Everybody go ahead and turn around, shake hands, get up and walk around a little bit, stretch, move. Find somebody you don't know, shake their hands, tell them you love them. Glad they're here. We'll get started here in just a minute. All right, let's get started. <clears throat> it's good to see everybody here this morning, and uh, glad I'm able to be here. Amen. And uh, it is always a privilege anytime we get to we get to come and uh, meet uh, at church together. Amen. And I sure am thankful. Let's open up in a word of prayer. It is so good to see Brother Doug here uh, today. Glad he's here with us. Love Brother Doug, Miss Robin, and if you would open us up in a word of prayer, Brother Doug. pray that we not come in vain today, but Lord, that we didn't come to be seen or anything, but we come to see you. I miss you, but Lord, I pray that you'd help us today from your word. I pray you help us in the singing. Everything that's done is bring glory to you. Lord, I pray that you'd bring in our minds, Lord, and keep us concentrating on you. And Lord, that we'd be able to serve you better in the days to come. Lord, we see those days are short. Lord, we need to be busy about the Father's business. I pray you'd help us, Lord. We need your help. We want to thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Page 46. Page 46 in the church hymnal. And uh, we're going to sing that, I'd Rather Be an Old-Time Christian 
than anything that I know. Amen. All right, now let's sing. In this world I've tried most everything And I'm happy now to say There is nothing like religion In the good old-fashioned way I am walking in the old-time way And I want the world to know That I'd rather be an old-time Christian Than get anything I know I'd rather be an old-time Christian than anything I know There is nothing type Christian With a Christian love to show I'm walking in the grand old highway And I'm telling everywhere that I go That I'd rather be an old time Christian Lord than anything I know There are many things I'd like to be As my journey I pursue well, I have longed to be a leader like a mortal man would do. I would like to be a millionaire with a million to be still. Oh, but I'd rather be an old-time Christian than anything I know. I'd rather be an old-time Christian than anything I know. There's nothing like an old-time Christian with Christian love to show. I'm walking in the grand old highway And I'm telling everywhere that I go That I'd rather be an old time Christian Than anything I know All the world is bright since I've got right now I sing and pray and shout All my burdens have been lifted Since the Savior brought me out I will tell the world no far and near as I travel here below That I'd rather be an old-time Christian Than get it thing Sing now I'd rather be an old-time Christian Than anything I know There's nothing like an old-time Christian With the Christian love to show I'm walking in the grand old highway And the tailing everywhere I go That I'd rather be an old-time Christian than anything I know. Sing it now. I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. There's nothing like an old time Christian with a Christian love to show. I'm walking in the grand old highway and I'm telling everywhere that I go that I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. Amen. Page 114. Page 114. I ain't never been soft. Amen. Amen. All right, you altos, y'all pick it up now on this. All right. Ever since Jesus saved me. Ever since Jesus saved that pardon, I have been singing every day. Praise the Lord, blessed holy name. Through the dark shadows, He is with me, leading me on the up. Holy name, surely I know the home is 
I've never been, I made some mistakes along the way that I'd like to go back and fix. But that's one thing that happened in my life that I don't want to change. I just wish I'd have got saved earlier. Amen. And I bless the Lord for it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Amen. Ain't that a blessing? I've done all right, Brother Richard. Let me take it off and change. Amen. I, I done messed this one up. Hey, Brother Richard, he gets on to me for wrapping the cord, and I've quit doing that. He's got me trained a little better than I used to be. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Ask God's help in the service this morning. We certainly need his help today and we're looking for God to help us. Brother David, lift your voice. Ask the Lord to help us. Lord, I'm thankful, God, that, Lord, for the day I, I accepted you. And, Lord, there's nothing I'm sorry about doing that, Lord. And I'm thankful that you're real. And, and God, you're coming for us again one day. And I pray, Lord, you bless the preaching today. Lord, I pray for the one that don't know you today, God. Lord, that you uh, deal with their heart, help them to see their condition, save their soul. And Lord, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. Bless us this week. Be with us. Help us be a light for you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You can be seated. I say a word of welcome to you. It's good to see you. We've got several visiting with us. Chief. Amen. Amen, Chief. Amen. <laughs> We're glad they're here this morning. Amen. I tell you, I've been getting some good and some great reports this week, just been encouraging all week about folks handing that. I appreciate what the Lord did just a couple of weeks ago about I mean, us getting a burden for our friends and neighbors and handing out the tracts and things. And I've been getting some great reports about how the Lord is. All right. Had to get some instruction from the sound room right there. Brother Andrew, that's, that's our pigeon right there, our old-fashioned our old fashioned communication. Amen. Um, but uh, it, it's been a blessing. I mean, uh, this week, Brother Jason texted me, and I thought, what a blessing this was. I mean, I've just been encouraged they had a a, fin, a a tree fall on their fence and and um, Dawson got out there and got to cutting up the wood and they got a neighbor down there has been sort of hard to reach don't want to never, never say a whole lot you know and um, but he's always splitting wood so Dawson went down there and asked him said hey you need some wood and he said yeah I'll take it so Dawson cut that tree up and took it down there to him and uh, while they were getting that wood unloaded and everything Dawson got to witness the young man and give him an invitation to camp, and I mean, an invitation to church. And I thought, praise God. What the, I told him, that's wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. Can't get him to wave or say hello on the road, but you go down there, and God let him use that wood to get the door open and invite him to church. And I say, to God be the glory for that. And then I think Brother Mike told me, we, I, was, I, I got so excited about that, I called Brother Mike and told him, and he said, well, man, Wednesday night, they said May had given out 25, 25 invitations. And uh, there, so, I mean, look at there, Dawson, as shy as he is, can step out of his box and invite somebody to church in May. What is she, 11? 
can give invite 25 different people to church. I say, what a blessing. Then yesterday, Brother John sent me a picture of him and the girls out getting their 25, inviting people to church. Said the first time the girls had ever went on vis visitation with him. And I say to God be the glory for that. Amen. I don't know, Miss Shannon, it might be you. I went to the cleaners the other day. Now this is where old Brother Adam Shirley ain't here. He got on me the other day. He he brought my he brought the little brochure up here and he said, Preacher, they're going we're gonna get sued for false advertisement. I said, What are you talking about? He said, You got this young picture of you and and he said, these people are going to come to church and wonder where the pastor's at. And uh, I said, won't you hush and go sit down? And uh, so I walked in, and I, I wondered, and I think y'all go to St. Clair's. A, a different lady was w waiting on me that normally does. And uh, she said, are you a preacher? And I said, yes, ma'am. She said, well, you're the one that's on the back of that brochure. I thought, that's for everybody that thinks I'm false advertising, praise God. But I thought, what a blessing, what a blessing. That, that, that's encouraging. And, uh, and I'm excited as, to hear more as, as we have opportunity to witness to folk, invite them to church, and I think that's wonderful. It's good to see Chief bringing his neighbors. We're so glad that they're here. Man, friend, family, family day is just around the corner, first week of May. And uh, I'm just excited about how, how the Lord has put it in our heart to get out there and start telling people about the Lord. And I'm telling you something, I, that first time you do it, and it's nerve-wracking, and even on, even on a visitation day, it's nerve-wracking knocking on that first door. But, once, man, once you get going, I, I want it to become second nature to us, to where it's just part of our life and what we do. And I'm excited about what the Lord's doing, and I'm excited about the – and, man, if you have those experiences, tell me. I did. I got so excited about what, what the Lord used to also do right there with his neighbor. I called Brother Mike. I said, listen, what happened today? And I thought to God be the glory. Amen. Hey, we got guys all, we got them scattered from pillar to post today. Brother Kobe's in Albania. Brother Mark and the fellas are preaching and singing in Texas. Car, uh, Brother, Brother Scott and them are preaching in his, in his dad's meeting this week in Florida. And uh, Brother, Brother Randall is at Fairfield this morning. And Brother Adams in Powhatan, Virginia this morning. So we've got them scattered from pillar to post this morning. So we want to ask God to help these young men. We got several families coming in from being gone on, on, um, on uh, uh, spring break vacation, so you pray God give them traveling mercies as they come in. And uh, but I thank the Lord for God using open these doors for these fellows as they preach, and we'll ask God to help them today. Don't easy, and Brother Doug and I'll be flying out to go to Wyoming on Wednesday, and I'll be preaching for him at Jericho Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and then flying home on Saturday. So you pray the Lord to give us traveling mercies and help us there. And that the Lord will help us there. Miss Shielder got some good reports this week from some tests, so we thank the Lord for that. And then uh, pray for Brother Danny Rogers. I had to take him to the hospital yesterday with some, some chest pains. So let's ask the Lord to help him as well. Don't forget our couples, married couples, Friday night, April the 19th. We'll have our a Marriage Matters night. And uh, Brother Scott Caudill will be here and going to speak to our marriage couples. We'll have supper uh, around 6.30. And uh, then we'll have, after that, we'll have a time a fellowship around the Word of God, around our marriages. So don't forget that. Fellas that are going out west uh, just in a couple of weeks to, to help the missionary out west, um, Brother, Brother Patrick will be leaving Wednesday night, uh, the 17th. So you fellas that are going, Brother Patrick's going to pull the trailer, take the saws and equipment and all that kind of stuff and your clothes so you don't have to worry with that on the plane. So you can either bring that, fellas that are going next Sunday, or next, uh, not this Tuesday night, but the following Tuesday night, which will be uh, the 16th or next Sunday the 14th, and he'll put that in the trailer. So all you men that are going out there to be a part of that, don't forget that either next Sunday or a week from Tuesday night, bring your clothes and, and your equipment, and Brother and brother Pat will get that taken out there. So don't don't forget these announcements. Lord's will, uh, in, couple, in two weeks, Brother Dave, Brother David Epps will be with us on the 21st. He'll be praying about that. Brother Doug's going to preach for us tonight. We're tickled. He and Miss Robin are here. And I thought, man, it'd be a shame to have him slip through and not not get him. I, Courtney called me last Sunday. I guess it's last Sunday night, wasn't it? And uh, she said, Daddy, she said, Daddy's preaching, preacher, and he's got a gun on the on the communion table. I said, well, I guess everybody will behave tonight, praise God. Amen. And uh, he asked me last night, he called me, Brother John, he said, hey, preacher, you got a gun I can borrow for tomorrow night? I said, just tell me which one you want, Brother Doug. Amen. But uh, So we're looking forward to Brother Doug preaching tonight, and uh, what a blessing that'll be. I thank the Lord for it. And uh, pray Kobe be traveling home on Wednesday from uh, 
Thursday from Albania, so pray God give him traveling mercies. He's been over there, him and Brother Richard Lynn, trying to get some time set up where they can get in the prisons in Albania and have some prison crusades. So I'm thanking God for those opportunities that are open there. So let's pray for him that God will help him to there. It's good to see you this morning. Appreciate you being here. We're going to have the choir to come sing. And uh, we, we're gonna, if you sing in the choir, we need you this morning with all these families going, Brother John. Amen. Amen. Right. What the probation officer said that if he turns himself in and has a clean drug screen, that he'd be willing to go in front of the judge and ask the judge to lift the ban. Amen. Where he Amen. can stay because it'll be Amen. twice now he's done that it. they've locked him up and he's passed the drug screen. Amen. And that proves to the court that he's staying clean and sober where he's at. Amen. Which is in the long term really what they want to see. Right. Uh, but just pray. I mean, Homer don't want to do that. I don't want him to have to do that. Right. Uh, I don't think the church wants him to have to do that. But mm-hmm. we need God to do something. I saw a lawyer. Four thousand dollars to file a piece of paper. That don't make no sense to me. Right. right. Uh, and so, just pray that God puts His hand on the situation. Amen. And, and He don't have to stay long. Amen. Well, Brother Homer's putting his life back together. And I say to God, be the glory for that. And um, I praise the Lord for how God's helping him. So we need to ask the Lord. I mean, if He can turn the king's heart, He can turn a judge's heart, He can turn a probation officer's heart. He can do that. So let's pray to ask God to intervene in this situation, Brother Homer, as he's trying to put his life together. And I thank the Lord for that. I'm glad God, he, man, he's been faithful to church and trying to do what he can do. So let's ask the Lord to help him in this situation, all right? All right, well, let's stand on our feet. You bring your tithes and offers to the front. Then if you sing in the adult choir, like I said, you come help us. We need you to help us this morning. You sing in the choir. Chris reminded me, and I forgot about this. I don't know if some of you remember, but I, I would know the college kids would remember. A young man by the name of Jared Tatum, he, he left a year ago on, in January, and he went, to, he went to basic. He graduated from University of North Georgia, and he spent about eight months with us. He was from Northwest Georgia, and he started coming to church while he was at North Georgia and got real faithful about coming, and God got to work in his heart. Brother David remembers Jared, and, and, and I know the college kids because he came to Sunday school. And uh, he's, been in, he's been gone for um, just over a year now, and he's gone through basic, gone through some advanced training, and he's over in, around in the Fort Bragg area. And uh, Jared, Jared uh, called me or, or texted me on Wednesday night, and he said, Preacher, I just want to tell you. He said, I'm over in Bragg, and he said, I'm going to a little country church just right off of base. And he said, I just want to call and thank you for what God did in my life while I was with you there at Wahoo. And he said, Lord's will, Sunday morning, God's called me to preach. And he said, I'm going to make it public Sunday morning. And uh, he said, I just wanted y'all to know, and thank you for what God did in my life while I was there. And I say to God be the glory, amen. And I bless his name, what God's doing in his life. And uh, he, he, like I said, just slipped in, sat in the back, and, uh, and, and started coming. And man, got, got faithful while he was here. And he just wanted to, be the, he wanted to tell me and tell the church, thank you and to pray for him, and God will help him. So I, I was encouraged I was encouraged to hear that God had used us to be a blessing to him along the way. So you pray for Jared this morning. Pray for the choir.
Amen. We're missing a few, but they'll, they'll do good. You pray for them and help them, right? Amen. Amen. All right. Page 34. I'm going to go to page 30. Sit down. Sit down. Through my disappointments, strife and discontentment,
think about all the, all the uncertainty that's in the world. I read this week about Iran's going to attack Israel and all that kind of stuff. And I, I think about the uncertainty of the, of the election that's coming. And man, everything's what's around the next being. What's around, let me tell you what's around the next being. Heaven's around the next being. Amen, friend. The Lord's around the next bit. Amen. And I know this world's all, and I, it may not be tomorrow, and it may not be next week, but I'm telling you at the end of the way, it doesn't matter what goes on in this world. It doesn't matter who's sitting on the thrones of power in this dominion, but I'm telling you, seated at the right hand of the Father this morning is the God of heaven who's in control and is going to take care of the child of God. I tell you, every once in a while, I get to thinking every once in a while, Miss Courtney made me that picture in my office not long after Dad died, Mom died. And every once in a while, I get to missing them. I get to missing them, and I, I don't have Mom's voice, but Miss Courtney somehow got, got a, a voicemail off of, uh, off of our phones, and, and Dad, it doesn't it, it, it say much, Brother Howard. It, it's, not, it's not some long, drawn-out conversation, but every once in a while, on Sunday morning, I'll go in there, and I'll take my phone, She's got that QR code in the corner. And I'll take a picture of that QR code with my phone and it takes me to a voice file. And this is all it says. This is your papa. Give me a call. This is your papa. Brother John, I don't, that ain't saying, that ain't a whole lot, that ain't no deep conversation. But you know what I'm hearing? I'm hearing my father's voice. And may I say to you, the Bible said as cold water is to a thirsty yeah. soul. So is good news from a far country. And I'm glad I don't have to go to the, uh, to the wall and take a picture and get my phone out. But I can lay my Bible on my desk or I can play it uh, through, the, through, the, through the car radio as I travel. And I get to hear in about a land that's coming down from God out of heaven. And I get to hear in about a land where there's going to be no sickness and no sorrow and no separation and no storms. And I'm going to see about a land that in the midst of that city there's a throne. And there'll be no need of the sun and no need of the moon. Uh, because he is the light of that city. I'm telling you, the same peace that just hearing his voice is when my other father speaks to me out of his book. And I'm glad, thank God, glory land. Amen. Glory land's just not far away. You listen while I sing. Amen. Say, oh, Brother Mike. This morning, Jen said uh, that a lot of people are looking for the red heifer. Yes, sir. Uh, they can look all they want to. They can find 10,000 red heifers or they can't find one, but they don't have a thing to do with them coming back to get us. That's right. They can hunt red heifers from now on. That's old. But when Jesus gets ready to come back, yeah. he's coming. Yeah. That's, That's right. right. That's right. They don't look for the heifer, they'll look for the lamb. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Say on, Grandpa. Tomorrow will be five years. Five years. Yeah, that been five years for me. Yeah. But just a few minutes. Just a few right? moments. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 A day with the Lord's a thousand years and a thousand yeah, years right. a day. Right. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Some of them been in heaven. It's just been a few seconds. But I tell you what, they're looking for the rest of us to get there. You better right. believe that. Amen, yeah. friend. Amen. 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 It's going to be a glad reunion day. Yes, sir. Thank God, thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, sir, Brother Howard, say on. Well, I just said this one time this morning, but I feel like I need to say it here. The first journey the children of Israel made was from Sinai to Paran. And he took them from a place that was called uh, Enmity. And he told Moses, You've been here long enough. You've been here long enough. Thank you. 
Noah Broughton said it this weekend. Well, Noah's about 81 years old, and he's a man of small stature, a lot like Brother Guy. And preached him at a youth meeting this weekend. And Brother Jacob, his, his hand just trembled while he preached. When he'd sit there, his mouth would tremble. He got in that pulpit, and God touched him and helped him. And he said, man, when you, you see we get saved, God justifies us. He said he takes us out of the world. And said, then he sanctifies us. He takes the world out of us. He said, but one day he's going to glorify us and take us out of here all together, praise Amen. God. I'm looking for that translation, aren't you? Amen. 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 See that second verse. Praise God. I'm glad heaven's for real. Amen. Amen. Amen.
I was at Brother Tony's this weekend preaching in, in the youth meeting. And uh, I really got to think a lot about heaven. Brother Broughton's preaching. And I really, my mind went back this weekend to, to Brother Willard. Last place I was in service with him was at Brother Tony's. And uh, Brother Tony had him up. He was quoting some of the poetry. And God was helping him. I mean, the Lord was helping him. Place was packed. And man, they were about to shout the house down. And Brother Barry Goodman and I were sitting right over here on the on a little short pew that they have on the platform. And man, God was helping preacher. And I said, Brother Barry, I said, man, he's about to take a lap. I said, he's about to take a lap around this place. And I said, if he runs, I'm running with him. I said, I'm going to run with my preacher. And buddy, it wasn't long. He took off. And I did what I said I was going to do. I went with him. And we got about a third of the way around that left side, and he stopped. He is out of breath. He said, son, he said, Brother Meyer, he said, I can't finish. He said, won't you finish this lap for us? Four weeks later, I was walking out from under a cemetery tent. Last thing I said, I put my hand on his casket and I said, Preacher, I'm going to run this last lap for us. Amen. Amen. And I tell you what, sometimes the laps get rough. <laughs> sometimes I get winded. Amen. And sometimes there's some unexpected potholes along the way. And sometimes my own flesh gets in the way of failure. But I'm glad when we get to heaven, and I think about the great Christians that the Lord's let be a part of my life. And old Brother Amos used to, he used to, I mean, from the time I was these boys' age, but even before I was their age, He'd stand up there and sing in the power of God. And the great Christians that have gone ahead, every one of them say at the end of the way, they want to they hear the Lord say, well done. i tell you one thing, there's been a lot of things in our life that we're going to regret. We wish we'd have done different, decisions we'd have made different. But i tell you what, we get to heaven, we're going to be glad we got saved. We're going to be glad we gave whatever we gave. We gave it to the Lord. Gave it, I mean, we're not going to regret living for Christ. Amen. Because it really is going to be worth it. I don't know if I can sing it or not. I don't get to sing now once every two or three months. My voice stays so hoarse. But I'm going to do my best. And you pray the Lord to help me. Say on, Brother Jake. Come on. Come over here. Second Timothy chapter uh, 3 verse 14 where he said but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned amen, amen. been assured of amen whom of whom thou hast learned them. and uh, brother Chris texted me yesterday and he said uh, he said can you teach me tomorrow and I told him I said you're a procrastinator waiting this long to tell me I'm going to teach for you and all that be honest with you I just wasn't getting much yesterday trying to figure out what I was going to teach him and um this morning I got up, my alarm clock went off, I tried to get up there real early, and I was trying to study it, and I went back and forth several different locations in the Old Testament, thought I'd teach, and just nothing was coming to me. And I've just got my office set up upstairs, I looked over there and sitting back, and I'm thinking, Lord, what do you want me to teach this morning? I forgot about this verse, and looked over there, and there's two little notepads on my, on my, uh, on my, on my shelf over there, and I thought, what is that? You know, I just got my books up there, and I don't know, I went over there and grabbed it. It's funny how the Lord works. I went over there and grabbed it, and it was little notepads that I had wrote down, preacher's messages from 98, 99, that I had wrote in there. And I used to sit beside my dad and my mom, and I'd just copy my dad's, my dad's sermon notes, and I'd just write them down on there. And uh, that verse popped back up in my mind, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and been assured of, 
And that just kept going in my mind, in my mind. And I thought about, you know, back in 98, 99 and all that, you know, my dad and mom had took me to church and put things in me. And uh, there was little notes that they had wrote in there every now and again. My mom and dad would write in there just in the middle of a service. They'd write, I love you and things like that. And I begin to read that. And I'm going to be honest with you. There's several times in the in the line, in the ministry, to be honest with you, you just don't feel like reading your Bible. And you just don't feel like praying. And you just don't feel like going on. Amen? And uh, be honest with you, sometimes you just feel like giving up. And uh, you just, what good are we doing? You know what I mean? And I begin to read those notes and go through those messages uh, that I had learned as a little boy and that I had been assured of, amen. And those things that God had put in my life when I was just seven and eight and nine and ten years old. And here I am, it's like my little nine year old self was preaching back to me uh, this morning while I was reading it, just saying, Continue and go on and keep going and don't quit and don't give up. Uh, and then I thought about uh, my three little boys there writing down notes and things like that. And I thought, boy, uh, the things that God's putting in them right now that they don't even know about. But one day down the road when they're 32 and 33, they'll look back and uh, they don't even know what they're seeing and what they're writing down. But uh, just continue, just keep going. And I was singing that, this song this morning, Glory Land, it's not so far away. And I believe I'll just keep on going. Amen. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up, Brother Ron. We're going to keep on going, Brother Titus. We're not going to quit. We're not going to go the other way. We ain't got uh, very much farther to go, Brother Chris. Amen. And I want to be found faithful serving the Lord. Amen. Continue thou. Amen. Thank God that uh, uh, God give me a family, uh, mom and dad, that raised me in church. Amen. Amen. And put something in me. Amen. Thank God. I want to keep going. Amen. It's a joy. It's a joy serving the Lord, Brother Doug. Amen. Uh, You fight hell throughout the week, but I told him this morning. Every Sunday morning when I get to get up with my family, we load up in the car. We come to church. I look in the mirror. I see all three boys back there. It puts a smile on my face. I come in the parking lot this morning get to joking and tease and laugh with my pastor. I mean, it's a joy to serve the Lord. Amen. It's worth every mile of the trip. Amen. It's worth it all. He's worth it all. Amen. If if He never blessed us again as much as we our flesh would hate it, He's still worth every mile of the trip. Amen. Amen. I love serving the Lord. I love my church. Amen. Amen. He's good this morning. We don't have to do this. We get to do it. It's not a drudgery. It's a delight. It's a delight. Brother Dean said years ago, Brother Dean Bryant said years ago, when all his kids were grown, he told me, he said, son, when I first came and the boys were little, Riley was 18 months when I came, and then Carter was born a year after we came. He told me, he said, son, enjoy these days. He said, the greatest days of my life were when I used to load all the children up and me and mama and all the kids got to go to the house of God together. He said, those are the greatest days of my life. And I tell you, some of you better to think, you think, man, right now, they, they're diapers and they're crying. They don't sleep through the night and potty training and teaching to read. And man, it's work and it's work and it's work. And you're thinking, man, I can't, I can't wait till they get big. I can't wait till they get big. Don't wish those times away because they're going to be gone and you're going to look in the rear view mirror and they're not going to be back there. They'll be in their own car. They'll have their own family. And you'll wish, man, I wish we could go back together again. Amen, friend. I'm telling you, these are, these are good days. I know there's battles and there's mountains and there's burdens and there's struggles. But man, we don't have to go through it alone. We're not in this thing alone. He said in, he said in John 13, he said, I'll go, I'll go with you even to the end. And I'm glad, thank God. It's a, it is a joy. And it's a blessing. Just to continue, listen, some of us have been raised in church all of our life. If we never heard another message, we've heard enough truth, 
to get us to heaven a hundred times over. You say, well, why am I struggling? Because we ain't lacing it up in boot leather and living it. Amen. We, we, no, we probably don't need a whole lot more light than we've already heard that we've been raised. I mean, I've been saved 37 years. 37 years. Heard the greatest preachers to don shoe leather in my generation. I've got to hear them preach. Truth upon truth. We can make it. Well, they used to sing that choir song years ago. I mean, I'm talking about 50 years ago. When I was a little boy, in my, but in my young years, I used to sing that song, said, I can make it all the way home, over mountains and through the valleys. Said, I can make it all the way home. And I bless the Lord. Amen. 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 But Jay, come help me just in case I can't sing it. Amen. <clears throat> oh, well, I've been over mountains. I've walked through the valleys. And from trouble's cup, I've had my sin. But heaven's eternal at the end of my journey, oh, it's worth every mile of the trip. And like a happy pilgrim who's arrived on that shore and forgot how the waves tossed his ship. If I could see Jesus smile, hear him say, well done, my child. Oh, it'll be worth every mile of the trip. Well, I've stood at some bedsides of some Christians departing, and I've heard these Last words from their lips. I see the crystal stirring, flowing. I feel the gentle breezes blowing. Oh, it's worth every mile of the trip. Well, as they entered the harbor, of that heavenly city there to anchor his battered ship down he joined in the chorus of that heavenly choir oh it's worth every mile of the trip and like a hat arrived on that shore and forgot how the waves tossed his ship. If I could see Jesus smile, hear him say, well done, my child, oh, it'll be worth every mile of the trip. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just stay right there, Miss Julianne. Just look at your Bible for a minute. First Chronicles chapter 22. First Chronicles chapter 22. I, I watched, I watched Brother Broughton listen to him. I didn't just watch him, but I, I listened to him preach on Friday night. 81 years old and Really, Brother Jeb, he had to put his hand in his pocket to keep it from shaking. And he told me, he, he said, I, he told him before he got done, started preaching. He said, now look at here. I've got a little touch of Parkinson's. And he said, he said, I don't know what all that's going to hold. He said, but I'm just going to preach and shake as long as I can preach and shake. Praise God. I thought, praise the Lord. But as I sat there and I, and I pondered while he preached, thought about the, all the senior men of God 
that I've looked to for many years. Brother Edgar, Brother Willard, Brother Guy, Brother Dean, Brother Marvin, Dr. Sammy Allen, Preacher Preston Moore. I mean, I could go, I could just name them one by one. And Brother Howard, they're gone. I mean, I think, I mean, Brother Tommy is one of the few that's left. Brother Tommy C., one of the very few. I mean, think about that, Brother Howard. I mean, I know all the men y'all look to, you, Brother Roger, these senior men of God, they're gone. They're, they're, they're gone. That generation of men are gone. You talking about giant men, those were giant men to me. They walked with God, I, I, and I believe when they prayed. Now, I'm not just talking about Brother Darrell sitting back there, his dad. I, I believe when Brother Harold prayed, when he said, Lord, I believe the Lord said, yes, sir, Brother Harold. I, I mean, I believe that. He told me, not long before he died, we were visiting, he, he, he said, I asked him, I said, Brother Harold, how, how do, how do you still tell the Lord good night, last thing you say, first thing you say in the morning is good morning? He said, yes, sir, yes, yes. What he told me. And I, I, I think about those men of God that I've looked to. They've left. First Chronicles 22, David's leaving. The greatest son that Israel has ever known. The greatest soldier that Israel has ever known. The greatest sovereign that Israel ever knew. The greatest shepherd that Israel ever knew outside of Christ was David. And Brother Howard in 1 Chronicles 22, he's, he's leaving. And, and he's got his arm around Solomon. And he's talking to Solomon. And he said, now Solomon, I'm, I'm about to leave. I mean, you can look at verse, you, you, you can look at chapter 23, verse 1. So when David was old and full of days, he made Solomon his son king over Israel. And he begins to lay out what he's done so Solomon can build the house of God. He, he said, man, David prepared, verse 3, David prepared iron in abundance for the nails of the doors of the gates and brass in abundance and cedar trees in abundance and brought much cedar wood. David prepared abundantly before his death. Then he said in verse 14, he said, I've got a thousand talents of gold and a thousand thousand talents of silver and brass and iron without weight. It's in abundance. Timber and stone have I prepared. But man, I like this next phrase. Look at your Bible. He said, thou mayest add thereto. I'm glad when I walked out from under the two, the, the two great tents I had the great honor of being a part of Brother Edgar's funeral and Brother and uh, Brother Willard's funeral. I walked out of both of those tents, and I, I think about what those men put in me. Brother Edgar taught me about the power of God. I mean, I, I was little when he was our pastor, but man, he walked in the power of God. In my older days, when he would come through Harmony Street, I, he'd walk in there. And I'm talking about, man, a giant, a man of God. When he preached that you were going to hell, you thought you were going that morning. Am I, can I get a witness? Some, some of you have been around, Brother Ron and Amber. Remember, Brother Darrell, Miss Carol, remember, he'd come to church. Man, he preached with that kind of power. But then God let Brother Willard come in my life, and he taught me how to enjoy my Christianity. He taught me that I could worship and, and man, that God wanted to bless me and fellowship with me. Man, I, I walked in awe of the power of God, but then the Lord let Brother Wheeler teach me that, man, we could worship and it could be real to me and I could enjoy the fullness of the Spirit of God. I'm glad, Brother Howard, when I walked out of those tents, God wasn't dead. My heroes had died, but God wasn't dead. The work of God was not over. It was not time to fold the tents and circle the wagons. 
And that's what David said to Solomon. He said, I'm about to leave and I've left you with a thousand talents of gold and a thousand thousand talents of silver and iron and brass and it's without weight. And he said, but look here. He said, you can add to it. I'm, man, I'm thinking of these, I see these kids sitting here. Man, there's been much poured into your life. There has been much invested in you. Amen. The Word of God, just like Brother Jacob said, we took those notes. I've got stacks of notebooks. I learned how to outline. I didn't learn how to outline. Y'all okay? I didn't learn how to outline at Bible college. I learned how to outline sitting by my mother in church and watching her take notes of Brother Edgar preaching. I learned how to outline before I was 10 years old. Amen. Now, I couldn't do it in shorthand like she does. I thought, she was, I thought for a while she was Pentecostal writing all that stuff. I didn't know what those words meant. Some of you old timers remember what shorthand was. I mean, it looked like she was writing in Egyptian hieroglyphics to me. I didn't know what that was. I didn't learn, I didn't learn that at Bible college. I learned it sitting beside my mom. Now I've got notebooks to this day. They're a stack of, of spiral bound notebooks that's full of notes. And every once in a while I'll get them old notes out and just read them. And it's just like the same. In my broken hand and mom's hand. And man, those messages keep to I just keep pouring back into me. Amen. Think about all that Dr. Barton put in you all them years. Amen. And now everything he's putting in you. You had no idea when you were teaching at the technical college and, and uh, Miss Robin working at the missions and, and uh, doing that. Well, you had no idea that God was going to send you 1,700 miles across the country and let you, all those things he poured in you. And God was going to let them, you pour them out in Wyoming and help missionaries. I mean, God was invested in you because he had something for you to add to the work of God. Amen. Amen. And old brother Noah Broughton preached Sunday night, uh, Friday night. He preached on there was a man sent from God. And his name was John. Amen. I ain't being ugly right here, but I'm going to nail it down. A Baptist that won't crow in his own barn, y'all to make dumplings out of him, praise God. It wasn't John the Methodist, and it wasn't John the Presbyterian, and it wasn't John the Calvinist, and it wasn't John the Pentecostal. It was John the Baptist, praise God. Amen. I'm not apologizing for what we are. Amen. Everybody okay? Don't get nervous. Amen. And I thought there it was, his hand was shaking. And he couldn't get far out of the pulpit because he wanted to hold on the pulpit. And he was preaching about some young men need to give their life to Christ. I looked at, I looked at Brother Barry Goodman sitting beside me on my left. And I said, Brother Goodman, I said, it's a real reality, Brother Jody. I said that this is the last time that Brother Noah Broughton will get to preach in this meeting. But he's preaching on there was a man sent from God. And I said, what if the Lord's going to call some young men to preach tonight to step into his place and fill the gap that he's going to leave? And Brother Nathaniel, before the night was over, three young men surrendered to preach that night. And the next morning, another young, Saturday morning, another young man surrendered to preach. Are you listening to me? Boys, the work of God's not done. If I die tomorrow, your parents die tomorrow. The work of God's not done. You say, well, I'm just a boy. So was David when he cut Goliath's head off. So were the three Hebrew children when they stood up to Pharaoh and walked into the fire. And uh, there was a God in heaven walking through the fire with them. What I'm saying is there's work to be done. And as long as we're here, there's work that can be added there too. He said, I like what he said. Is it verse 16? Somebody look at verse 16 for me. Is it verse 16 where he said about the brass and the gold? And then he said at the end, arise. Yeah, that's where I want to get to. He said, arise therefore and be doing. Arise and be doing. The other day, what did you tell me? Henry got his clothes on. 
got his tie on, he got his vest on, and he had his, he told his mama, he said, I got my preaching shoes on today. And what was it? He said, when I'm how many? Oh, when I'm how many? Yeah, he said, she said, are you going to preach? She, he said, not till I'm, not till I'm eight. And she said, well, Henry, we probably need to get saved first before we start preaching. Amen. Amen. What's wrong with that? Why would we want him to grow up and be a ball player? And waste their, and, and, and I'm not, you know I'm not against ball. I love it. We'll go play at church if you want to. It'll be half court. We ain't running. Praise God. Amen. I love it. But if that's all my life consisted of, when I stand at the judgment seat of Christ, I'm going to stand there at loss. Why wouldn't they have a heart to set out that I want to serve God? I want to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. And what he said was, it's time to get up and start doing. If, if you're under 25, our children, our kids, you're under 25, stand up. Our kids, church kids, 25 years old. Well, I don't, some of us are, aren't some of us jealous right now? I, I, I remember when I could stand up under 25 and down, but those days are over. Amen. Those days are over. I was preaching for Brother Doug Rains back in June, January, and this missionary went to pray, and Brother Doug Rains said, now, it was last year, he said, all you preachers that are 50 years old, y'all come down here and pray. And I, Brother Stace Pearson got up and started down there. He said, come on, Brother Mark. I said, I'm not going. He said, why? He said, Cause, I said, because I ain't 50. I said, I'm minding the preacher. And Brother Doug Rains said, he saw us cutting up back there. He said, Brother Stacy, what is it? He said, Brother Mark won't come pray because he's not 50. He said, how old are you, Brother Mark? I said, 49. He said, all the preachers, 49 and older, come on and preach. So I went down there. Now look at here, you youngins. Let me say a word to you this morning. Let me say to you what David said. What David said to Solomon. Arise and be doing. You older kids that are sitting here, you older ones, watching church, that mentality has got to come to an end. Watching it happen. It, it, it's time to get engaged in it happening. Not watching somebody testify, but you testify. It's not watching somebody else worship, but you worship. Amen. Andrew, how long you been saved? Three years, got saved on a Sunday night right over there, didn't you? How many years you've been saved, Alter? Three years you got saved coming out of the choir right up there on this side, didn't you? Clay, what is it, two years? Almost two years in June, ain't it? Two years in June. How about it? Five years? Seven. Now let me help you, boys. I've been saved 37 years. I've been called to preach in, in a week. 31 years ago. Do you realize you have as much of a Bible right to worship God as I do? You don't have to ask my permission to worship. You say, well, preacher, I'm, I'm 12. You're 13 now, aren't you? Are you 13? You going to heaven? Are you not going to hell? Have your sins been forgiven? How about you, Audrey? Let me, let me just say a word to you. Arise and be doing. Girls, young ladies, you say, preacher, everything ain't right. As long as you're in the flesh, your life will never be all right. There'll be, there'll be struggles. I mean, man, I don't care. Some of these won't be saved 50 and 60 years. We live in the flesh and our flesh is weak and we're going to struggle and we're going to fail. But we're not worshiping because we're worthy. We're worshiping because he's worthy. We're, we're serving because he's perfect. We're not serving because we're sinless. We're serving because he's sinless. We're serving God because he's everything we desire to be. Amen. Amen. I say to you, arise 
and be doing. In North Georgia language, get at it. Get after it. Amen. Amen. Some of the greatest days that we've seen as a church is when our young ones was, man, God was a pouring his touch and power out on our kids. And man, man, it got to stir in these senior saints of God because they were seeing that everything they've given their life for is still worth it. He told him in those verses, he said, you're going to have to observe what the Lord said. Talking about the law of God. You're going to have to be committed. You're going to have to be controlled by the word of God. You can't, go to, you can't go to Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff and try to figure out where you're going, by, where you're going to stand based on the like button. God help. Half of what's getting liked on, on social media is out of hell and it's flesh. I mean, and let me just say that, and that's half what's being posted by church people. Amen. You got to be, you, that book right there, you got one for you. Graduation. Amen. There, there, there's, there may be new laws and science that change. They may come up with different things about mathematics. But that book right there, it got you out of hell. It'll guide you to the right mate. It'll guide you through life. It will not change, even though people try to change it. It is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It is, a, I'm talking about it is honey for the soul. It is more, it's more to be desired than gold, yea, than much fine gold. It'll guide you. You're going to have to be controlled by the Word of God. People change. Churches change. Preachers change. That Bible when the world's on fire and the stars are falling, Brother Josh, out of the sky and the mountains are being carried into the sea, there's one thing going to be alive and well, and it's the Word of God. You're going to have to be committed to the work. He said, arise and be doing. Arise and be doing. You say, well, preacher, I can't teach a Sunday school class. Hey, I know, I know you can't. You're not ready to teach Sunday school class yet, but I'll tell you what you can do. You can take that back, you can take those garbage cans over there, got wheels on them. And when folks gets time to gets time to clean up, you can push that garbage can around through there and get them seniors' plates and put it in there. You can sweep the floor. We set up bunks at camp. Amen. We think the only place to serve God's on a platform. Amen. Here's what our prayer is. Here's what our prayer is. We're talking about serving God. Everybody okay? We're talking about the journey. But Howard said we're leaving. We're leaving Sinai headed to Paran. We're leaving the law and the fire and the cloud. And we're trying to get to that place of beauty. Arise and be doing. All we've ever done. You're 21 years old. And Riley will be 24 in about three months. All your mom and I has ever done is tried to expose you to the right things, the right preachers, Holy Ghost. Let me just say this. There is no substitute for Holy Ghost Church. No substitute. And all we've ever done is try to expose you to the right things. All your mom and daddy's ever done is try to expose you to the right things. Expose you to the right things. All you youngins. But here's the kicker. Somewhere along the way, your exposure is going to have to become your experience. I can sing there's never been a time that he's not been faithful. And I can sing a time that he's never been anything but almighty. And for a while, you're going to have to take my word for it. And you're going to have to take Brother Howard's word, Brother Mike's word, and these senior saints' word. But somewhere along the way, the Holy Ghost and God of Heaven is going to flip the switch. And it's not going to be what He's doing for everybody else that's bringing you joy. But it's what He's doing in you, for you, with you, and, and through you. Amen. Amen. It's not my coattail. It's not your parents' coattail. You're not going to get happy on your somebody else's worship. But you want to get to the place where you start getting happy on your worship. Amen. And I'm praying, this is my prayer, that your exposure becomes your experience. But Darrell, years ago, if what your daddy had 
had not got in you. It'd be a much different place now with him gone. But that same God that he talked to down there on that rock pile made himself real to you. Wasn't enough for Brother Gary Crisp to have it. And it wasn't enough for Brother David Nix to have it. But somewhere along the way, what they had exposed you to became your experience. That's what, that's what we need. That's what we need. Some of you are afraid if you sell out to God, you're going to lose everything. You ain't never going to have any fun. Let me tell you something. I promise you this. You'll get more out of serving God than you ever put in. Amen. There's more than be, there's more joy, peace, fulfillment in the will of God than chasing the flesh and chasing the world. Amen. Arise and be doing. Arise and be doing. Let your nine year old self preach a little to you, like Brother Jacob said. Some things you've learned. Some things you've learned. Let your exposure. And you know what? Some of us old heads that sit in here unmoved, we need to remember our experience. And let God stir our heart. They're worth it. And I want to keep it hot until their exposure does become their experience. I'm telling you, I've said it a lot of times. We're going we're to sing. Did you, you get ready to sing, you're Brother Jacob. When I was a boy, and I went, when we went to faith, man, I, it seemed like to me those senior saints of God, they were giants in my mind. And them old time ladies would shout, praise the Lord. And I was lost. I knew I was lost. And I thought to myself, they had that kind of joy. They rejoiced and they praised the Lord. And they, man, they get happy in the choir and they just rejoice. And I thought to myself, Brother, How, uh, brother, brother uh, I, I thought, Lord, I'm not saved. Brother Titus, I said, Lord, when I do get saved, that's the kind of saved I want to be. I want to enjoy what I have. I want, to, I want it to change my life. And can I say I've not been disappointed. I've not been disappointed. Hey, arise and be doing. That goes for all of us. Well, Brother James said, we don't know how long it is. We don't know how much time we've got. The most sobering reality in my life, that after we take our last breath, whether it be by the trumpet, whether it be by death, there's going to be a judgment seat. Mm. I've took a whole lot of tests through the years that I never felt prepared for. And I promise you, there's one on the outside of this world, outside of this life, that I don't feel. Brother Tony said when Dr. Curtis Hudson died, he was dying. Brother Bobby Robertson was there, the pastor of Gospel Light Baptist Church. And here it is. I mean, all, all, of, all the work of God that Dr. Hudson did. He said he looked at Bobby Robertson, and he said, Brother Robertson, I'm about to go to heaven, and I ain't done nothing for the Lord. All the service he did, the messages he preached, the people he led to the Lord. But when it came down to the end, he felt like, man, I hadn't done anything. I want to do something, don't you? I want to do something that counts for Christ. You young men, you young, young boys, you ain't got to wait on somebody else. Arise and be doing. Let's stand. But Jacob's going to sing. We can add there too. I want to add some things. 204 years of history in this place. Well, the work of God ain't done or we'd be gone. So that means we can add to what's been done for the glory of God. Sing on, Brother Jacob. Yes, sir. Say on, Brother Ron. You know, you look around, and I don't mean to put him on the spot, but the oldest man. In the church. Yeah, right there. Brought somebody to church. Brought somebody to church with him. Yeah, morning. 97 years old. Brought visitors. How many of us went to our neighbor this morning? Yeah, that's right. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Ain't that a blessing? Yeah. 97 years old. Brought somebody to church. Yeah. I say to God be the glory. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Arise and be doing. Brother Howard, I want to add something to it. Not to the Word of God, but I want to get involved in the work of God. Do something for the Christ. How about you? He's going to say, you mind the Lord. Some of you youngins, it'd be a good time to just say, Lord, I've been exposed to the right things, but I want you to make it real in me. Make it mine. Make it mine. Since Amen. Jesus Since Jesus took control, took control, he placed within my heart a happy song. The joy bell sweetly ring while of his love I sing. Press home, it won't be fair. Rest hold, it won't be very long until we reach that land of song. In heaven, some sweet day, I'm going there to stay. Rest hold, it won't be very He said, make mine the real thing. I don't know who used to sing that, but he said, make mine the real thing. Don't you want yours to be the real thing? Not just what somebody else has got, but what he's got in your heart, what he's put in your place, the things he's proven to you, the blessings he's given you, the call he's given you. Man, that's the way I want to raise the Lord. Press home, it won't be fair. Sing it with me now. Oh, press on. It won't be very long. Not long until we reach that land of soul. In heaven, so I'm going there to stay. Press on. say it's been good to be in the Lord's house. We've got several folks visiting with us. We're so glad y'all are here. And others, we're glad Brother Leon brought his neighbors. We're glad they're here. It's good to see Brother Darrell, Miss Carol, Brother Rocky, his wife. We're glad to see you. I'm scanning. I don't know if, I, if I'm missing you and you're visiting with us. I'm sorry if I hadn't looked your way. But we're glad you're here. And I hope you'll come back and uh, be with us again. We have, again, prayer meeting tonight at 545. Then we'll, then we'll come into the evening service this evening. So don't, don't forget to be back tonight. May God bless you is my prayer. And I pray.